there's about one in a thousand births affected by deafness. With every um, year that goes by, more and more people have progressive loss of their hearing. This is the first clear link from a single base pair change in a microRNA to a disease. We know that there are many, many causes of hearing impairment. Some of them are environmental, like exposure to excess noise, or some antibiotics can cause hearing impairment. And understanding the molecular basis of hearing impairment in the human population is really very difficult. And that's one of the reasons why you really need to turn to animal models for hearing impairment, so that we can um, identify each gene one at a time and understand exactly what that gene is doing in causing the hearing impairment. The mouse that we're reporting at the moment um, was found because it had a progressive hearing loss and progressive hearing impairment is a very uh, common thing in the human population and we have very few clues as to what causes that loss of hearing and so any mouse that has progressive hearing loss is potentially very valuable in giving us some access to genes, some clues as to what's going on. We looked in great detail at the inner ear of the mouse to look at the, um, the cells, the, the sensory hair cells that are responsible for detecting sounds. Uh, these sensory hair cells are the cells that change the sound, which is a mechanical vibration, um, into a, an electrical change in the, in the cell, which then triggers nervous activity leading to the brain. Well, the hair cells in the diminuendo mutants are very badly affected. Hair cells are incredibly fine structures. They're very, very carefully organised. If you look at a healthy um, inner ear, um, they're arranged in nice, neat rows. They're very neat. Whereas in the mutants that we have, they're completely messed up. We localised the mutation to a region on chromosome 6. And it was particularly interesting at this point because we didn't know any known genes to cause deafness on this, in this region before. So whatever it was, we knew it had to be a novel gene. And we finally found the mutation. Um, it was a mutation in a microRNA. The microRNAs are very interesting genes. They're not, they, unlike most genes, they don't code for proteins. They don't go on and make the proteins that do things in the cell. Uh, they stay as RNA and they control other RNAs, which ultimately, of course, has a knock-on effect on those other proteins. When we found this single base change uh, mutation in the microRNA, in these mutants, the mouse mutants with hearing impairment, uh, we then asked, well, what of this cascade of activity is going to lead to the deafness? Out of the hundreds of genes that were downregulated by the activity of this particular microRNA, we found that there were five that were of particular interest to us because we knew that these five genes were very important for the function of the ear. So as, as soon as we found the mutation in this microRNA in the mouse, we contacted um, my, my colleague in Madrid, and as it turns out, the same, the same week, um, he had found mutations in these two large human families in the same microRNA. So we decided that we would work together. It was very useful to be able to share data with them on this, and also for, um, to, to look at genes which they've discovered and for them to look at genes which we've discovered, uh, which are affected by the microRNA, so that we can look at them in the respective systems. We now have a clue as to why sensory hair cells um, fail to function normally or don't develop properly in the first place. And this gives us access to the molecular basis of hearing impairment, whatever the cause is.